campaigned Johnson and the Democrat Party did to black America was pure evil. Pure evil. <laughs> Let's take no prisoners. First and foremost, SOS Cuba. I have not heard anybody yet on the stage mention the fight that is going on in Cuba, and every single person in this room should be talking about it. They don't want you to talk about it. How dare! Our corrupt government try to pretend that those people are fighting because they want COVID-19 vaccines. That is despicable, okay? Those people are fighting because for the last 60 years, they have been oppressed by communism. The same variety of communism that is beginning to take shape in America. So secondly, SOS America, okay? It is so important, I will tell you why, the most, the events that I, I value the most in terms of doing are always the events with younger people. They make me the most excited because I am telling you guys that if you do not awaken yourselves to what is going on to this country, we will not have a country. You will grow up and you will have children and your children will not grow up in the same country that I grew up in. That is the truth. Look at what they are doing right now. Under the guise of COVID-19, they are pretending that communist tactics are somehow okay. It's for your safety, guys. It's for your safety that we're gonna mask two-year-olds when they're in school, when they're, in, they're, they're going to preschool and they are masking them. It's for your safety. It's for your safety that we're gonna shut down your businesses and tell you that you don't get to work while Big Pharma mints nine new billionaires. Nine new billionaires were minted during the shutdowns when people's families went broke, when people lost their jobs. And at the same time, they are welfare rising America. Let me tell you something about the left. Nothing they do no matter how crazy it seems, is without purpose. They are Machiavellian. They have sat down and they have drawn up the plan and they have been following that plan for years. The reason why I started attacking the lie that America is a white supremacist, racist country, the lie that has kept black Americans out and down and outside of the American dreams, for 60 years, just like Cuba, is because I understand that black America was the mold. What they did to black America, they are now doing to every single person in America. Every single person. What Lyndon Baines Johnson and the Democrat Party did to black America was pure evil. Pure evil focused in realizing that you could oppress a group of people, you could steal from them, you could steal from their f futures, and all you had to do was use fear as a mechanism. Let me tell you something that will always inform the way you think going forward. Every single time you watch the news, every single time you watch any person, and your thought process is, wow, I'm scared. Stop and ask yourself why they're trying to scare you, okay? Fear is the mechanism by which every single person is willing to give up their freedoms, okay? People that I admire, people that have stood on the turning point stage for years, people that I looked up to, COVID-19 hit and they lost their minds. No, no, we, we should just lock down everything for a little bit. The government never takes freedoms away and then willingly gives them back. I don't care how safe you felt. Well, Trump's president, Trump's president, so it'll be fine if we do the federal shutdown for a little bit. Are you crazy? The Democrats will then do is when they then have their person in office like they do now, what the Democrats will then do is say, well, you guys did it first. We're just locking down businesses. We're doing exactly what Republicans did first. This is normal behavior. The government never takes freedoms and willingly gives them back. We learned that lesson during 9-11. There's a reason why we still have to go through TSA at the airport and take off our shoes. You don't remember that time, but once upon a time, you did not have to do that in America. You just went to the airport and you got on your plane. 
And then people were terrified, rightfully so, of course, because the media every day was saying there could be a terrorist on your plane. So here's what we're going to have to do to protect you, to keep you safe. We're going to have to examine every cavity of your body, right? I have to see everything that's going on at all times. You only carry this much liquid when you're on the plane to keep you safe. And so we gave up a little bit of freedom. Income tax, fundamentally unconstitutional, right? But what happened? When did, when, when did federal income tax come into play? During a war. We got to collect this money from you guys to keep you safe. It's going to be temporary. Don't worry, income tax is going to be temporary. Man, still going on, income tax. Man, 9-11, all of those things, the airport's still going on. That was supposed to be temporary. Man, don't worry, guys. COVID-19, we're all in this together. If we all just do exactly what the government tells you to do, then we can go back to normal. Anybody's lives get back to normal? That's because that is the language that is used by communists. We, 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 we're all in this together. We just have to do this for a little bit of time. Fundamentally, the people that are sitting in the United States government want to take as much power as they can from individuals and hand it over to themselves. They want to control every single facet of your lives, of your future, of your children. And the design and why the most important people in the country right now are the people that are in schools is the propaganda and the lies and the manipulation that come from your professors and your teachers, okay? When I was growing up, the teachers essentially told me that all Republicans were racist, that the country was backwards and then Democrats came on a horse and saved the world. So as a black American, it was my responsibility, it was my duty to make sure that I always voted Democrats into power. I was too young to realize that that was brainwash, and I lived my life believing that. I lived my life believing what the media taught me was true. The media taught me, I knew, the teachers taught me that Democrats saved America. They forgot to leave out the part that it was the Democrats that enslaved black Americans, that segregated black Americans, and that welfareized and broke down black families and gave every single problem. And so what is the tidbit that they're forgetting now to tell you? I think about it now, I think years from now, what will the textbooks say? The Democrats saved us during a pandemic. They saved us by shutting down businesses. That's not what they're trying to do. They're not trying to save you. They're trying to take the mold what they did to black America. Welfare eyes, took everything from them. Made people get on their hands and knees and pray to government. If you want to know why the left hates the topic of God so much, if you want to know why the left mocks people like Mike Pence when they talk about Jesus Christ, why they pretend that people that believe in Christ are crazy, it's because they know that there's actually no such thing as atheism. And let me explain to you what I mean. I know a lot of people who think, oh, you know, I'm not, I'm not that religious. You don't need to be religious. A lot of people who think, I'm an atheist. I don't, I don't believe in God. There's not such thing as an atheist. Faith is a natural state of humanity. We're always asking ourselves why. We're always asking ourselves, what is life about? That quest to believe in something is natural. The Democrats understand that. So what they're doing is they want to remove your faith in anything and have it replaced with your belief in government. They want to be the God in your life. So when people get on their hands and knees and pray that the government will deliver them stimulus checks that amount to nothing, absolutely nothing, that's what they want. Oh, please vote on this bill. Please, please give us our stimulus checks, pennies, while they send billions and billions of dollars to their organizations, right? The Kennedy Center got billions of dollars during the COVID lockdowns. That was a part of the deal. You signed it away, you gave it to them. They enriched their friends, they enriched their donors, they enriched their organizations, all written into hundreds and hundreds of pages of COVID-19 stimulus that nobody was gonna read because all they wanted was that little $100, $300 check that the government gave them, which they could have made themselves. They were able to keep their jobs and work, right? <laughs> The Democrats understand that faith is never missing, it's just replaced. So when you see these kids 
and they're on fire talking about climate change. Oh my God, climate change. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Like it's see, oh my God, it was like summer and now it's fall and like it's climate changing, it's climate change, right? For AOC, that's become a pathology. It's like every, no matter what happens, AOC, like it's, it's climate change. She's like, oh my God, Taylor Swift is not on stage, climate change. She didn't make it on stage, so it's climate change. Like I missed my flight because of climate change. Anything that happens, she somehow tells you it's because of climate change. Well, that's them trying to instill a different kind of faith. Right? When I was in school, and let me tell you something about the joke of the climate change lobby, it is nothing more than the government attempting to grow itself. Once again, what do they tell you? The world's going to end unless you give us some more of your money. We, the government, we can fix the climate. Just give us trillions and trillions of dollars. It's a joke. It's a scam. It is a scam that is stealing from your future. Do you understand when they write this COVID-19 package and they reroute trillions of dollars, governments don't make money, they take it. They're taking it from your tomorrow. They are thieves and they are predators because they focus on young people. They focus on the people that they believe are the most vulnerable and the most susceptible to their lies. Lies. The people in this room is who they are preying on. You are being preyed on by Democrats. You are being preyed on by the left. You are being preyed on by AOC when they tell you, give us your money, give us your money, or else the planet's going to be gone in 10 years. Do you want to know how many times they have guaranteed the planet was going to be gone in 10 years? Do you want to know how many times... Let me help you out. When I was in school, we were told we were going to be dead in 10 years. Didn't happen. They told us it was going to be global warming because the ice caps were going to melt and the polar bears were going to drown, right? We're not going to have any more polar bears, right? That's a lie. The po polar bear population has since doubled since the time that they were telling us this. We didn't flood. Generation before, was told that it was going to be global cooling and they were all going to die. Remarkably, they said, global cooling, the earth's going to freeze and you're all going to die. And then it didn't happen because it started warming. So they said, never mind, never mind. That didn't happen. They missed then te their 10-year mark. There was the ozone layer generation who were told that the ozone layer, we're all going to die because there's a hole, the ozone layer. That didn't happen. So they had to pivot. But don't worry, guys. In all this time, they took trillions. They've been taking money for all of these promised false apocalypse, right? Then there was the generation, and this one is the most sinister to me because I just can't imagine growing up, I believe it was in the 70s, some of your parents will remember this, they were told that acid rain, <laughs> that the acidic oceans were going to produce acid rains. You had children that were scared every time it rained. Imagine the people that lived in Seattle, right? <laughs> If you're in Arizona, you're chill. You're like, it doesn't rain that much here. But like in Seattle, these kids were terrified every time it rained. Once again, fear being used as a mechanism to control the masses. They understand the importance on focusing on the youth. Like so many other totalitarian regimes have understood that if you can pollute the minds of the youth, you can create government activists for tomorrow. There is a reason why your schools and your classrooms are no longer focusing on academics, hard academics. They don't want you to be smart. Think about this. Bill Gates, one of That was a great thought. That was great. That was exactly right. <laughs> Boo is correct. Bill Gates made his money in understanding math mathematics and computers, and he understands that any person who understood what he knew could become successful. But you want to know what Bill and Melinda Gates are funding? They're funding what they call equitable math. They want equitable math taught in classrooms. You want to know what equitable math is? Equitable math follows the theory that getting the right answer is a form of white supremacy. Oh, I'm not kidding. Look it up. Equitable math wants kids to get a yes, a correct mark for getting the wrong answer because at least they tried. And it's a white supremacist idea to expect children to get the right answer. In other words, he is funding the intentional dumbing down of our population. The intentional dumbing down, the watering down of the academics. This is the focus when you go, why are we focusing on critical race theory in schools? Why are we teaching children that to be black means you're less than and to be white means that you're an oppressor? Why are we teaching that? 
because they want to make sure the kids aren't learning anything that will get them ahead. What they want to produce amongst your generation are a bunch of people that can't make money. That can't make money. When you talk about majors like gender studies, they didn't have this when I was in college. Gender, you're majoring in something that took me all of three seconds in a classroom to learn. Male, female, the end, two genders, that's it. But now you get, now you get a generation of children, and this is what they're trying to do to you guys who major in this stuff, because why not? You're spending $100,000, sometimes more, to go to a university to major in gender studies for four years. Four years, and you come out with a degree in gender studies. Oh my God, yay, I did it. I did exactly what I was supposed to do. What are you gonna do for a living with that, right? I mean, is that, something breaks in my house, I've never called the gender studies major, right? Please come, come to my house and help me learn where the bathroom sign should go, said nobody ever, okay? So you get these children who are massively in debt, who think that they did everything the right way, they come out of school and they find out that the kid that didn't even go to college, right? The kid that maybe sat behind them in math class is making more money in them, than them because you know what? He went to a trade school and he knows how to fix the AC and it turns out, yeah, when the, heat, when the AC goes off, I do need to call that guy to come fix it. And so what that creates is a generation of bitter, angry people who don't know why they're angry, right? Because they did everything the right way and that's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking to do what you're told your whole life and to find yourself in debt with no way to make money. Their only option really is to become a professor in the same meaningless field that they were learning under, right? To become a professor in gender studies. They're angry and they're bitter at society. They're angry and they're bitter at capitalism. How is the guy who fixes ACs making more money than me? That's what they think. That's what they're angry about. This is the reason that when you look into the class of people who are Antifa activists and you go, what's wrong? You went to co your college educated and you're throwing Molotov cocktails into a police cruiser. How does that happen? Because they're angry and they don't know what they're angry at. They think it's the rich guy. They think it's the not so rich guy, but making a very good living middle class guy, right? They think the taxes need to be raised on these people that learned how to get ahead. And no, it's not. In fact, the taxes need to be taken by the corrupt politicians that deluded so many Americans with their corrupt policies. Make no mistake, your generation is, will be the generation that decides whether or not America is going to be America, or whether or not from 60, 60 years from now, we will be the Cubans fighting in the streets for our lives. Not gonna happen. There's something else that you guys need to pay attention to, and I, and I say this so seriously. The other day I was reading an old NPR article, and it was about all of the steps that societies, the most evil regimes ever, have taken before they ended up in genocidal terms, before they ended up committing genocide against its own people. And it, it shocked me to read this article. It was called The Psychology of Cruelty. What is it that allows, it's not just crazy that you have dictators that have slaughtered millions of people, right? That's, that is crazy. But the crazier part is the fact that millions of other civilians allowed it to happen and were okay with it. That's the fascinating part that we need to study and we need to examine and you need to know, because I am telling you, the psychology of cruelty is happening today. This article explains that first, it, it's about dehumanization. You have to convince people that this group of people deserves that inhumane treatment. In many societies, it starts with calling them vermin. The Tutsis, Rwanda, they were called cockroaches. We know that the Jewish people in Germany were called rats. Today, they call Trump supporters maggots. I saw this trending on Twitter, maggots. M-A-G-A-T-S, right? 
the article goes on to explain that you have to convince the masses that those group of people, whoever it is you're referring to, they're diseased. The government's doing you a favor to remove them. But noticing now that the media is spinning this web, they're trying to say that the unvaccinated people are conservatives, right? What do you think that's doing? The diseased people are conservatives. They're now calling it a pandemic of the unvaccinated. It's not even true that conservatives are the least likely to get the vaccine. In fact, the least likely to get the vaccine are black Americans, right? But they don't want you to think that, so they keep lying and they say it's the conservatives. What do you think they're doing? That's correct. They want people to believe that conservatives are diseased, that conservatives are unvaccinated, that conservatives should not be allowed to be in the same section when you walk into a, a game, when you walk into a concert. There's now medical segregation. It is medical apartheid. It's happening right now, right now. All of the things that they said would never happen and could never happen, they're talking about medical vaccine passports to move. <laughs> Boris Johnson introduced this yesterday in the United Kingdom. My husband is British. Do you know how scary it is that the people that we have fought to end world wars with, right? The people in England, the people that understand what tyranny is because they died alongside us in the fight trying to end tyranny in Europe are now saying we're gonna create medical slips for people to move. Let me ask you a question. I know how much pressure you're all receiving right now. If you wanna go back to school, you're gonna to have to get the vaccine. You're gonna to have to, ha you're gonna, then beyond that, you're gonna to have to have a passport. You're gonna to have to show that you're vaccinated, right? Let me ask you a question. In all of human history, tell me that time where the side that used censorship, bribery, propaganda, and coercion were the good guys. Never. And so what I tell you to do is to hold the line, okay? You do, and I am sure there are people out here that are vaccinated. If you got vaccinated because it was what you wanted to do, then good for you. Good for you. But if you are getting vaccinated because you feel forced, coerced, propagandized, or pressured to do so, do not ever think that that's the acceptable decision to make, ever. I don't care what it is. Tyrants, tyrants should not ever be able to force you to do things. And let me tell you something, just like the airport story, just like the income tax story, when the government somehow finds a way to force you to put things in your body, you will never get that freedom back. It will be paid for if you want it back through blood, just like what's happening in Cuba right now. That is what happens. That is the truth. The last of the fights that we are fighting and the one that I think is the most fun are of course the culture wars. How fun is it to fight? Hollywood has never felt this pathetic. They have never felt this meaningless. They have never felt this powerless, and that's for good reason. They are realizing that they're no longer rock and roll. Isn't that something? These people that branded themselves as against the grain, oh, I'm different, are lining up with the establishment, demanding that people get censored, right? Demanding the maggots have to go away. Demanding that Trump supporters are terrible, that we are alienated. These people aren't rock and roll. They're government propaganda puppets, right? And they think that we can't see through them. Let me tell you something right now. You stop buying their music. The power that the government has, the power that Hollywood has, is the, is the power that we gave to them, okay? You stop buying their music. You stop listening to their trash interviews. You stop doing what they tell you to do. And trust me, a lot of them I loved, trust me, it broke my heart to have to delete the Lady Gaga catalog. It broke my heart to have to delete the Tim McGraw one when he sang next to Biden. I will tell you that, but I am realizing now that Hollywood has been and is controlled by the left. It is, it's just the truth. There is a reason that the Bible speaks so much about idolatry. 
You go back and you can read, I don't care if you're not religious, you can read the Bible as an academic and the wisdom that that is in there and how prudent it is to today and what we are facing constantly talks about the sin of idolatry, why it is not good to idolize people. Because then when those people that you idolize tell you to do something, you might do it without thinking. That's the campaign. That's why the government pays these people to put their arm in an Instagram video and get the shot. Don't ask any questions, guys. Mariah Carey got the shot. Don't think. We're doing the thinking for you. They understand that. It's why Hillary Clinton, who lost twice, <laughs> <laughs> no, I agree. No, she has to be locked up. Yeah, honestly, she's got to be locked up. When I'm president, I'm going to do it. I'm going to go backwards in time. I love you guys. I love you guys. That'll, that'll be a promise made and a promise kept. And you know who else should be locked up? Dr. Fauci. 100%. 100%. We are without question facing the greatest battle that has ever happened on American soil. I believe that. We are right now fighting for our country. And you know they're squeezing in. The Biden administration is talking about controlling Facebook, censoring voices. And that's, that is depressing. But let me tell you something. Censorship only arrives in this form when they're losing control. They've lost control of the narrative. They know that people no longer believe them. Too many people are asking questions. Too many people are understanding that these institutions that we have placed faith in, the education institution, man, I'll tell you right now, anybody tries to force my kid, I'm, I'm going to homeschool. I'm going to homeschool. I'm happy to take online classes. I'm happy to homeschool. What I'm not happy to do is to give my government, give my child to the state. I'm not happy to give my child to the state. But in this battle, the only way we win is if we have hope. And the only way that we have hope is if we continue to communicate with one another. It is the reason why they banned Parler from the App Store. They don't want us communicating. They want to control the narrative. They want us to falsely believe that they are the majority. They are not. We in this room, we all around the country, we are the majority. I believe in the bottom of my heart, this country has never been more red. It has never been more red. <laughs> Guys, I cannot thank you enough for giving me this energy. I come here to plug into you guys. You think I'm inspiring you? You guys have inspired me. You are the reason. God created.